This episode is sponsored by Campfire Pro, a brilliant writing and world building program that gives you tons of tools to keep track of all the details of your story and world. With it, you can make easily accessible and referenceable detailed character sheets, timelines, interactive maps, and it also comes with full privacy. In addition to these features that comes with a standard package, you can also grab the world building pack with even more tools to help build your world. Make new species, items, magic systems, and develop your culture with religions, philosophies, and languages with this massive bundle of additional features. Campfire Pro is a one-time purchase of $49.99 US, and the World Building Pack is available for an additional $24.99. With Campfire Pro, you can do away with those massive text documents where it's so hard to find the specific information you need. Keep everything easily and accessible. So, a big thank you to Campfire for sponsoring this video, and if you would like to learn more about Campfire Pro, there is a link in the description below. Greetings, I'm Shad, and this might seem like a rather odd video for me to make, but there is a reason why this YouTube channel is called Shadiversity and not Shad the Medieval Guy, because I always have branched outside of the core theme of my channel and made writing related videos from the very beginning. And this is just going to be another one, though a bit more specific in the topic. I've actually been wanting to make this video for a good while and to give appropriate credit to what is honestly a very underrated film and to also defend a bit a theme, a trope, that has been getting rather a bit of bashing lately. And it's the trope, the idea of love at true sight. And yes, I just said love at true sight instead of love at first sight. That was just a slip up because I had in my mind the broader phrase, true love at first sight. And my head was crossing those two wires a few more times, but don't worry, later on the video, I actually start saying it correctly, love at first sight. This is such a classic idea, of course, coming from fairy tale stories, and the bashing that it has gotten more recently is that it never happens, or seemingly doesn't happen, and that it's irresponsible for you to fall in love with someone so quickly. You can't marry a man you just met. And I will admit that there is some wisdom to that, but that it is not wholly universal, and that it is not unrealistic either. It absolutely can happen, and if you would want a real-life example of it happening, well, here's a spoiler for you. Me. Yeah, I'm not kidding, okay? I knew I was going to marry my wife before we were officially dating. I had only known her for about a month or two before I had asked her out, and then we officially dated for the period of two weeks before I proposed. Now, I will admit that isn't as quick as some depictions of love at true sight, but my point here is that it is absolutely possible to fall in love responsibly with someone knowing them very deeply and clearly enough to the point where you want to spend the rest of your life with them and that it doesn't take too much time. In my own experience, it required having a mature understanding of myself who I was looking for, and same for my wife as well. And so after I proposed, we then got married two months after that. And so on the day that we got married, we had only known each other for about four or five months total. And once again, we had only known of each other for about a month or two before I officially asked her out. Then we dated for two weeks, I proposed, and then we were married two months after that. And just to really push this point through, it was probably only maybe our fifth or sixth interaction where I literally said, I spoke these words in my mind when I was having a conversation with her, I am going to marry this woman because I got to know her character so deeply that she was everything that I had ever dreamed of and wanted to find. And so the idea of love at effectively enough true sight or falling in love very shortly after meeting someone is absolutely a real thing, but it needs to be done right. And the Disney remake of Cinderella is the best example I have ever seen of doing love at first sight 
perfectly, and there's more that I feel you can actually learn from how masterfully this is done in terms of character dialogue, characterization, and overall writing quality. Now, I am absolutely going to point out that overall the Disney remakes of their classic tales have been atrocious. Beauty and the Beast was just a dumpster fire of unparalleled proportion. It was impressively bad, let alone things like The Lion King. Um, Aladdin, I haven't even bothered watching because I've been so unimpressed with so many, didn't even bother to watch that one. But the live action remake of Cinderella, and I'm speaking seriously and honestly here, and this should, you know, hopefully translate to something exceptional because it generally isn't a type of movie I would enjoy. And I'll explain some of the additional reasons why I enjoyed this, separate to just how well it is written. But the fact that I love this movie so much and it has so few swords in it, granted, but there are some swords, so there's there's a few redeeming factors in it, I feel says something in that regard. But as I was saying, not only does this surpass its source material, the original Cinderella animation, in orders of magnitude, it is actually one of my all-time favourite films. Because just like many people, there are many things I like, it doesn't have to have swords, castles, knights, well actually, there are swords, there's kind of, there's a palace, kind of castle-like, knights, well, Maybe it is falling into a, but look, it's not an action flick I'm saying, it's not an adventure flick, this is a romance, love story, fairy tale. But it has such a beautiful message in it, it is an uplifting film, I love goodness, and the message of this film, which is done so beautifully, not only just in the spoken dialogue of the characters, but it is shown by their actions of have courage and be kind is a beautiful message. It really touched my heart. And then its execution with all the other complementing points with it, the cinematography, the music score, help uplift this film and support its strongest trait, the writing quality, in a very significant way. This is one of the better films I've ever seen. Like I said, it's up there with my favourite. Some of the things that this movie did so much better than the animation were definitely the characters, like amazingly so. Cinderella has a lot more personality and this is pure hearted to a fault. Truly kind but also suffers. She is emotionally abused in this and that she gets through it with such pure goodness is incredible. And then when we look at the other characters, like the evil stepmother, they actually justify her actions so well in this film. She is well-rounded and it makes sense. Where previously she was just evil for the sake of being evil, they give her cause and reason for it, and she's still a terrible person, but it's done so much better. And then the prince, I mean the prince in the animation didn't even have a personality, in fact he came came off as a bit of a snob, he was always bored and, you know, he was, he was yawning and it, of course everyone would roll their eyes at their stepsisters when he sees him, but that's about all the character we really get from him, apart from being handsome, right? So he was a blank slate nothing, yet the character that they wrote for him in this movie was done so well, the relationship with his father. They made him a genuinely good and well-rounded character, and in actual fact, these two characters, the prince, Kit, and Cinderella, are written in such a way that they are perfect for each other, but then that needs to be executed properly as well in the dialogue. And this is exactly what they do in this scene where they meet for the first time. And so I want to break it down with you, sentence by sentence, pointing out why it is written and done so well. Just to point out how well done it is, and that you absolutely can execute a love at first sight story perfectly, which I feel this film does. Oh, and by the way, the acting of the characters uh, is just flawless as well. And we'll get to see this in the scene as we break it down. So the beginning of this scene follows on from a fairly emotional bit of mistreatment that the stepmother and stepsisters did to Cinderella, cementing her new name over Ella as Cinderella, and basically banishing her as a servant, that she is not allowed to eat with them anymore. And so she actually runs from the home in distress and sorrow riding on the horse to try and vent her emotions and then she comes across a stag that the prince and his followers are hunting and so she then tries to get the stag to run away and distract them 
from chasing down the stag, the prince sees her, thinks she is in distress and goes to help. Now right from the offset here, there is already a decent amount to break down and it is a brilliant way to set up this interaction because these characters will already learn a lot about one another from how this interaction begins. First of all, the prince is trying to assist someone he sees in distress, so that's a positive character trait that uh, Ella would be able to observe. But also on the prince's side, he is seeing a young woman riding on a horse without a saddle, which is a difficult thing to do, it's independent, and he actually shows this in the perplexed expression that is on his face as he now slows her down. Are you all right? I'm all right, but you've nearly frightened the life out of him. Ooh. So just from his expression here, he's already showing a lot of confusion that this is clearly an odd sight, but as we'll see very soon, his confused expression is going to turn into bemusement. He likes what he's seeing here. He's impressed by this young woman being so independent and also going out of her way to save the life of an animal. The stag! What's he ever done to you that you should chase him about? You see, there it is. And this is brilliant acting because it is showing and reflecting a lot. He's not only surprised and thinks it's amusing she was trying to say the stag, but he also likes it. This strange country girl is different to the other women that he's interacted with, which makes her unique and interesting. I must confess I've never met him before. He is a friend of yours. And so instead of dismissing and deriding the notion of protecting an animal, he actually decides to accept the notion and then play along with it. And far from taking that as a potential form of teasing, listen to how Cinderella responds to that. He is a friend of yours. An acquaintance. We met just now. Instantly, they are getting one another. They are playing along together with this fun analogy of knowing this dear personally. And perhaps you've had that experience as well, where you've met someone and right out of the gate, you're just clicking with them. You get them. You can kind of understand the, their way of thinking and you can instantly fall in line together with certain ideas and conversation topics. And yes, that's exactly what happened with me and my wife. And just to demonstrate it, because it's actually kind of similar to uh, the interaction right here uh, with the deer. So most of my audience will know that I am actually a very religious person. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day saints and when I was around 21 years old I attended a more in-depth kind of Bible study class. It was actually an advanced study on the Old Testament where we were studying it in Hebrew. I was a missionary for my church for two years. I served as a branch president which is effectively the pastor of a congregation. I have a seminary diploma in religious education and I've done further study on uh, religion as well and the only people in this class that I attended were one or two other guys who were of similar age to me and then married couples and there was one girl who was in this class of the same age. And yes, that woman would end up to be my future wife. Now, right out of the gate, which is almost kind of similar, which is why I, maybe I love this scene because I also relate to it personally. But because I relate to it personally, I can point out how realistic and true so many of the elements are in it and therefore can proclaim it as a brilliantly written scene. And so for me, there was an instant peak of interest because there was this attractive young woman who was doing something that was out of the ordinary for most of the girls my age at that time. And it made her fascinating to me. I was deeply intrigued. Somewhat similar to Kit and Ella's first meeting here, Ella is doing something out of the ordinary that intrigues him. He wants to learn more. And the very first interaction with my wife might have very well been the thing that caused me to fall in love with her, if not be the thing that truly made me want to learn everything about this girl and it was that I had actually forgotten to bring a pen and I needed to write notes and so I turned around oh sorry sorry actually it was the second interaction the first interaction was me asking to borrow uh, you know the pen which she graciously did let me borrow uh, she had spares but in giving back the pen I asked her name asked where she was from and I know a lot of you guys are just gonna slap your head but if you're familiar with me and my content you know that I have a very cheesy personality and sometimes I just love really really bad jokes. And uh, if you're wondering where some of the corny humor came from with the character Arik in my novel, well, there's a side of me that loves corny humor. And yeah, you're going to see an example of this. I asked where my wife was from and she said she was from a town in Victoria called Seymour. And when I hear that, I just, I couldn't resist. And I, I do these 
really bad jokes purposely just for the groans. And so I just said to her, well, I guess you must see more. And it wasn't like an awkward joke where you can't think of anything to say and you just say something stupid. I said it purposely. These are the type of jokes I said because I love how bad they are. And I said it with the full expectation of getting the exact same reply that I almost universally always get, which is like the groan. The ah! Oh man. Yeah, I know. But instead of doing that, my future wife at that time actually got on board and her reply was, yeah, it's actually right near Kilmore. And so instead of groaning at my bad joke, she got on board with it and then came back with a better one. I was in love, basically, from that time on. We clicked and connected from that very first meeting. It really does happen. I can't really speak to how common or rare it is. All I know is that it is a real thing. I've experienced it and it is reflected in this scene right here because they connect in a similar kind of way where they have both gotten on board with this funny idea about the stag. I looked into his eyes and, and he looked into mine and I just felt he had a great deal left to do with his life. That's all. Miss, what do they call you? So what Cinderella just said is again another line that obviously intrigues the prince even more. It reveals a lot about her character and so the idea you can't learn a lot about someone in a short amount of time can be true in some instances but not all the time. And already there is a lot for the prince to learn from this young woman. She is very compassionate, but she's also brave, you know, riding without a saddle on a horse at high gallop, okay, that's actually a fairly dangerous thing, but she was doing it competently, so she's also competent. But on top of being compassionate, she's also empathetic. She looked into his eyes and then connected something with that animal. And so these are all legitimate things that the prince is able to learn. And even if you wouldn't be able to voice them, people pick up on these things instinctually. And these things can simply manifest as being even more intrigued, more attracted to this person. So he wants to learn more and he asks her, what do they call her? Never mind what they call me. And her response reflects something interesting. And this is another great example of good dialogue because she didn't need to say I'm treated poorly for the prince to pick up on the fact that she is treated poorly. They call her something that she doesn't even want to mention it. And so instead of spelling things out to either the audience or Kit, he understands it already. He shouldn't be this deep in the forest alone. And right there is a line for Cinderella to learn more about Kit. He's already shown a willingness to protect someone who he thought was in distress riding at full gallop, but now he is offering help. Again, positive character trait. I'm not alone, I'm with you. Mister, what do they call you? <laughs> you don't know who I am. Again, another brilliant thing, and in all honesty, a change from the original. Cinderella knew who the prince was in the animation, but here she doesn't. And this would mean a lot for someone in Kit's position because instantly now he knows what she says and does is genuine. It's not going to be affected by his position. They call me Kit. Now, even though Ella is unaware that this, it's not a lie, it's true, they do call him Kit. But the fact that he is not revealing he is the prince. It's Kit! 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 I'm Kit! Speaks to what I had just spoken of before. He wants to see her reaction as a genuine thing that's not affected by his position. But it also reflects a positive thing for us as the audience that is humble. He kind of likes the fact that he can speak and interact with someone outside of the realm of being a prince. Where do you live, Mr. Kit? At the palace. My father's teaching me his trade. You're an apprentice? Of a sort. He does not let that role define him as an individual. In fact, he speaks of it as an apprenticeship, which are all brilliant character traits for just a good, decent person. But once again, I'll just point out, these sentences are reflecting these characters brilliantly, very honestly, and for what Kit just said there, showing him to be very humble on top of the other things that I mentioned. That's very fine. Do they, do they treat you well? Oh, better than I deserve, most likely. See what I mean about giving the prince a good character? And there's a lot more to it in the overall film, especially with his love for his father. I love you, father. 
And because of that, we actually get a bit invested with the prince's story as well, because we don't want him ending up with a pompous, arrogant, vain princess like one of the ones that we see a bit later on in the film. He is a good person, so we as the audience get invested in his own story as well, not just in Cinderella's. And you? They treat me as well as they're able. And this is the part that I spoke on a bit previous as well, where Kit will understand the subtext of this comment without needing to pry any further, which now reflects intelligence and empathy. I'm sorry. And it's just good acting as well, because look at the expression. He means that. It's not your doing. Now, why would that comment reflect even more positively on Ella as well? And this is actually what we're seeing here. Every single line that these characters exchange reveal more about who they are to the other and reflect really good character traits that would make the other person be more intrigued, in fact, be more attracted to the other on top of just visual appearance. We are actually seeing these characters gradually fall in love through this exchange. And with Ella saying it's not your fault, she's showing a charitable disposition, that she doesn't seek to blame him, and she even treats the people who do deserve the blame in the most charitable way possible. Nor yours either, I'll bet. And here Ella sees true concern and empathy from the prince. Not so very bad. That's a great line because it again reveals so much about her character right there. Kit just learned that Ellen's situation isn't actually that great. And then she says it's not so bad that even in this difficult situation, she is enduring it well. She is looking for the positive. That's a very significant thing that she just revealed about her character right there. It's a perfectly constructed line which is true to her character and is letting Kit learn everything he needs to know about her to fall head over heels in love at essentially first sight. Others, others have it worse, I'm sure. We must simply have courage and be kind, mustn't we? And look at the expression here. For me, I think this is the falling in love moment, for Kit at least, because she has just said something that resonates deeply with him. It actually speaks to a profound, deep truth and philosophy that he holds, but he didn't need to express it. It came from her, unprompted by him. There was so much more to her. You know, how much more? You've only met her once. How could you know anything about her? You told me you knew right away when you met Mother. Which confirms to him that she is someone who bears the same heart. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. And right here, he has just met someone who feels something that is very deep and significant that is exactly the same. Do you see it? That's the moment. That's the falling in love moment for him right there. And it is acted brilliantly as well, because let's actually go back and see his face. His face shows surprise and incredulity at it, and then acceptance and admiration for it as well. See? He's surprised at that and very intrigued as well. And then he's overjoyed, and that's when I feel this character's heart is singing with love towards this young woman. Yes. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel. Please don't let them hurt him. But we're hunting, you see. It's, it's what's done. Ah, but we're not done yet. You see, Ella now is asking him to not do something that is just simply done. Just because it's what's done doesn't mean it's what should be done. Right again. And I feel this is another really significant moment because Ella has just expressed another significant truth that Kit really believes in, and it came from her unprompted. And this is confirmed by the larger story as well, because Kit is being pushed by tradition to do things that he doesn't feel should necessarily be done. He needs to marry someone from a foreign nation, someone with influence and money and power to strengthen the ties of the kingdom. But just because that is the type of thing that is done doesn't necessarily mean it should be done. And so it is a thought, a philosophy, that would sing to his character and is already in love with her, but then this would just hit it home. And then in response is going to do something that I feel really helps Ella fall in love with him. Then You'll leave him alone, won't you? I will. 
and he means it when he says it. And think about what that reveals of his character to Ella. He's willing to change his actions based on an honest request. Very well agreed. Willing to see something from someone else's point of view. Something that is denied Ella constantly with her own life situation. Thank you very much, Mr. Kit. And there she falls back in love with him. His shown compassion, concern, willingness to help and assist, willing to show mercy, and not only willing to hear, but agree and accept the petition to spare the life of that animal. And it isn't really because he is too concerned about the animal's life, he's clearly hunted the animals before, he's doing it purely out of empathy for her feelings on the matter. He would not want to harm or hurt her emotionally, so he shows empathy to her point of view. And that combined with all the other things she's been able to learn of his personality, she falls in love with him. Ah, there you are, your heart. It's Kit, 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 I'm Kit, I'm on my way. Well, we'd better get a move on, Mr. Kit. As I said, on my way. <laughs> I hope to see you again, miss. And that is the expression of love already. He does want to see her again because just being in her presence has been one of the most wonderful things he's experienced in his life. And that is the true thing. When you meet someone who you connect with on that level, you just want to spend time with them. In fact, you would like to spend the rest of your life with them. And are you? And she reciprocates that completely. Her feelings are the same on the matter. They have fallen in love and all it took was one scene and it was done masterfully. So yes, there we go. Honestly, this is a brilliant film and should be evidence to show you that a, you know, a movie doesn't need to have sword fights. Oh, there is a sword fight in it. Doesn't need to be an action film for me to like it, okay? Like, I'm a bit of a sappy guy. I can like a good old love story at times as well, especially when it's as well done as this. I hope you've been able to see why that scene was done so well and that I've been able to demonstrate it to you, at least in a small measure. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed as well. And of course, I hope to see you again. So until that time, farewell. This is perhaps the greatest risk that any of us will take be seen as we truly are. Have courage.